hi booktube um i'm gonna link another video down below that explains what i'm doing here um ultimately i'm unwrapping all my books and i didn't want to unwrap them all in that one video um so i'm just going to continue unwrapping and i thought it'd be cool on camera i saw a uh, shannon over at planet shannon uh doing unwrappings on her channel and i was i watched them all as soon as they as soon as they were uploaded they were so cool um so i thought i'd do that i'd steal that idea from her <laughs> except um my books are completely completely random I, I have no idea what's in them besides like the shape like that sounds like a hardcover book that's all i can tell you about that some of them i know are graphic novels oh no that's just a really thin book um because of the size but other than that i don't know what i'm doing i already unwrapped um this one book here Um, this one shelf. I already unwrapped this one shelf here um, in the other video. Um, as you can see, I already got rid of some books. Um, so let's just dive into it. Let's do it. What's this one? Oh, The Gargoyle by Andrew Davidson. This, um, <clears throat> uh, Weepka over at One Book One Review is one of her favorite books and I bought it. And I just haven't gotten around to reading it because I didn't know where it was on my shelves. But now I do. So that's awesome. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, okay. So this one, I've <clears throat> I read some of it, but I didn't finish it. I don't know if I marked where I stopped. No, I didn't. Um, so East of Eden by John Steinbeck. Um, I don't think I got too far into it, which is why it got wrapped again and put on the shelf again. Cool, cool, cool. Let me know down below how you think I should organize my books. These are just all unread books. I'm not going to mix them with my read books because I just I like that separation. But when it comes to books like this, I'm debating between like genre or by color. So <laughs> maybe I could do genres with colors within the genre. I don't. Know. Oh, because look at this. This is like a beautiful pink book, Madame Bovary. Um, and I read Flaubert's Parrot, but I hadn't read anything by Flaubert. Um, and this is such a beautiful dust jacket. Oh, and look underneath. It's nice blue. Oh, no, I like the dust jacket better. Um, and this, this looks like an old book. I just, I'm just interested. I'm, just, I'm rediscovering my bookshelves. 1957. That is, that is so cool. Okay, I do have a blue bag here that I'm throwing all my recycling into, so it's not it's not just going all in the trash. This is a big book, Anna Karenina. Like I've been fascinated with Russian literature, and I haven't been able to just go to my shelves and pick up more Russian literature because they've all been wrapped. But here we have Anna Karenina. So if I ever feel like reading another giant. Russian novel? I can now. Uh, let's see. This is that hardcover one. Let's see what it is. It could be upside down for all I know. Oh, I don't want to rip the... Oh, yeah, I was going to rip the... Uh, sorry, i got to be a little more careful here. Ooh, that is a nice yellow. Oh, okay. Oh, Radiant. Radiant. Looks seems familiar. Isabel Bea! A Long Way Gone. That was like one of the first books I ever read when I was on booktube. Um, so yeah, this is another one by him. Radiance of Tomorrow. Um, every story begins and ends with a woman, a mother, a grandmother, a girl, a child. Every story is a birth. That's just staying on my shelf for sure. <laughs> uh, let's try this one. This one's another hardcover. I really, really like hardcovers. I know some people don't, but I do. Um, Oh, The Machine by James Smith. I saw this on someone's um, booktube and it sounded really interesting. Um, cool. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take these books off so I can access these better, but that's neat. Okay, this is a chunky hardback. Let's see. Um, I taped them really well. I didn't want them to rip. Um, so, let's just... Oh, there's plates. Oh, I think this is The Corrections. Yep, yeah, by Jonathan Franzen. <laughs> um, 
yeah, um, I haven't read any Jonathan Franzen. I know that he was, um, he's often grouped with David Foster Wallace, and I've loved David Foster Wallace. Um, so we'll see. Cool. No books on this shelf that I want to get rid of yet. This is a really interesting, it's a paperback. Really well taped. <laughs> Paper's not so strong. Um, there we go. Oh, that's the back. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not going to say this word. Um, and Boneheads, Canada's Glorious Leaders Past and Present. Will Ferguson is a uh, comedian. I've loved the other books that I've read by him. And I've been wanting <laughs> to read more about, well, Sir John A. Macdonald. I don't know. Um, yeah, because he's actually my seventh great grandfather. I'm not proud of it. He's done a lot of horrible things, but I wanted to read more about him. Um, yeah, so maybe that will be a nice place to start, but it'll be funny. Oh, and I'm sorry, um, dad, Susan, I'm sorry, Susan and Jeff, but your dad got rid of the book. It's now my possession. <laughs> Let's see what's back here. Also, we have some mass market paperbacks in these. I didn't leave a spot for me to really, like, dig in here. I'm gonna try that. Okay. Oh, it's orange. It's orange. And it's Children of Doom. Which should be on the shelf over there because it's a sequel. But apparently it wasn't, so there we go. Maybe this is another Doom novel. No, oh, cool. Treasure Island. That's pretty cool. I actually lived in Bristol for a while, and Robert Louis Stevenson um, lived there as well. So we went to a pub one time where it says that he wrote some books. Oh, that was neat. I didn't get that book in England, I think. I did bring some books home from there, but. Um, oh, another massive hardcover. You can see there's going to be a lot of massive books, because those are the books I tended to avoid. Um, but they're not as intimidating anymore. Oh, okay. The City of God by St. Augustine. Um, oh, oh, this is cool. Oh, it's a little napkin with some doodles on it. What sensitive, not so sensitive, dangerous. That is, that is really cool. Um, I'm going to keep that out. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it would be in a book by St. Augustine, but there we go. I've been wanting to look more specifically for books by black authors, indigenous authors, Asian authors, and books about religion. So that's another reason why I'm doing this. Um, so I don't have to go out and buy more books. I can just rely on the 594 approximate books that I have here. Oh, oh, okay. I was looking for this because I've read the first book in the series, uh, Xenogenesis by Octavia E. Butler. So you can see I got it tabbed. But this is all three books in one. Um, so I've read Dawn, but I haven't read Adulthood Rights or Imagio yet. And uh, this is why I wasn't wrapping sequels after a while, because I was like, I want to get to the sequels. I don't want to wait, you know, potentially like seven years in order to get to this stuff. That's pretty cool. I'm excited. Um, this book, a trade paperback. Ooh, look at that red design. Oh, Voices from Under, Voices Under One Sky, Contemporary Native Literature. There we go, like this is a collection of short stories and excerpts and stuff with like pictures and, oh it's poetry too? Not, not very many pictures. See, it's got fiction and non-fiction, poetry, mythology, and drama. And it was on my wrapped shelf, so who knows when I would have gotten to it. Oh, this one's blue on the back but a different color on the front. There's another one, Angels in America by Tony Kushner. This is a play about the AIDS epidemic, I believe. And it's one of like the longest plays. This is like almost 300 pages long. So that's, that's, okay. Let's go to this one. I'm just gonna unwrap this one shelf and um, no matter how long the video gets. Um, oh, look, that book is purpley, purpley hardcover. Oh, this is Nightmares by Jason Seagal. I 
I don't read much middle grade. I do enjoy it though. Um, yeah, and I love the purple on this. Okay, so I'm not really coming across a lot of books I want to get rid of yet. <laughs> that was another goal here, but um, who knows. Oh, here's a graphic novel. This will be going on my graphic novel books. Um, okay, Let's see if there's any clues down here. Oh, yeah! Okay, so this is Rivers of London. I love this series. Um, but this is like the uh, graphic novel version of it. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm liking this. I'm like, I feel like I'm book shopping. I'm on a book buying ban. I've been very good. I've only bought the Canada Reads books, which was my exception. And I bought the physical copy of an audiobook that I'm listening to um, because I know it's going to be an absolute favorite. Um, and I want the physical copy to reread it next year. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, this one's double wrapped. Look at that. I really didn't want. Oh, okay. Wool by Hugh Howie. Um, this is a this one, Oh, look at this. No, these are from 2007. I hope they are not winners because you only have a, a year to collect them. So, like, yeah, uh, I've had this book since 2007. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> you see how long these books have been on my shelf? People are like, oh my god, I've had this book since 2018, that's so long. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 like, I have books from, like, when I was in grade 8, which was 2000, so that's 20 years ago. So, yeah, don't, don't worry. <laughs> um, another hardcover. Ooh, oh, cool, The Book of Lost Things? Is that what it's called? Yep. Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. Um, yeah, it's about grief. Definitely. Keeping that book. Let's just go down because I want to move the camera right now. <laughs> so let's just keep going. This is another hardcover. Ooh, ooh, it's like a yellow. Oh, I think I know what this one is. I think it's like mango or something. <gasps> a case of exploding mangoes. Okay, so I love Indian literature. Um, and it's hard to, well, it's not really hard to find in Canada, but it's, like, we don't get a lot. I think this is Mohammed Hanif. I think this is, um, um, does it say? Oh, this is Pakistani. Okay. Um, sorry for calling it Indian. It's Pakistani. Um, yeah, so, cool. Um, it looks like a detective novel. I'm really getting into detective stories lately, especially from like other countries. Um, those fascinate me more than like like Canadian, American, English ones. Uh, okay, so ooh, this is a really interesting hardback. Oh, Disgraced by Jane Posey. Um, you know, I, a few people have read this one and had issues with it on BookTube. Um, so that'll be interesting. Oh, oh, there's someone's phone number in there. It's not my phone number. It's, this is, I, 98% of these books are used. So yeah. Um, I think I'm going to keep, I think I'm going to keep this one. I think. Oh, and look, all these little tiny itty bitty books. There's, these are small. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one. Oh, this is a science fiction. John Brunner. He's one of my favorite science fiction authors. He wrote The Sheep, Look Up, and um, Stand on Zanzibar. I love those books. I love those books. Um, so I picked up a whole bunch of stuff by him without even looking at it. I just saw his name. I was like, I'm getting that book. So The Dreaming Earth. And I've learned not to trust the covers because they don't always depict the stories inside when it comes to his books. Let's see. Oh, this one was already opened. <laughs> um, I guess it got ripped somehow. Um, another John Brunner, From This Day Forward. Um, I can't tell you much about those books besides the fact that they're like classic science fiction from like um, 60s and 70s. This one has been ripped. It's a penguin classic, I think. It's orange. It's an old. <laughs> Look at that. It's all ripped. The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. Is this a penguin? No, it's a paper mac, but it's got like that orange. Macmillan. Um, yeah, it's a Thomas Hardy. It's a classic. Let's see what this little itty bitty. Oh, see, I've. Oh, I guess they got ripped somehow. Oh, this is The Crucible by Arthur Miller. So, this is a play about witches, I believe. I think. I haven't read it yet. So, I can't tell you much about these books because they're all unread books. <laughs> um, this one. Let's see. Oh. Oh, Whirly Gig by Paul Fleshman. This is um, 
this guy's friend dies? Oh, okay. He ends up killing a girl in a car crash that he purposely caused, trying to kill himself. And then he, um, is trying to redeem himself. That actually sounds really cool. Um, let's see. Let's see what else. Oh, this one's over here. And it's double wrapped. Is it? Yep. This one. E.L. Doctor rig time this was on a list of books um i think i'm gonna put this in the maybe section and take a closer look at what it's about because it's not sparking any recollection in me about what it's about so maybe pile let's see this looks like a classic um, oh the crimson Hell in the white by michelle Faber. Um, this is about a prostitute, isn't it? Yeah, a 19-year-old prostitute named Sugar in Victorian London. That sounds interesting. See, I, if I remember stuff about it, then I kind of want to keep it. Um, after this shelf, I'm going to go close the door because it is still around freezing here, but it was just a little warm in here. Can you guess from that? <laughs> this is good. How about from that? I can't. Is it away? Oh, a boy's own story, Edmund White. Um, this is about a, I think he's gay? Or he's trying to find out if he's gay? Something, oh, uh, Edmund White has crossed the catcher in the rye with deep profundus. I liked both of those books, so let's give that one a try. <laughs> Most often myself, if I saw these on like a shelf, would I purchase them again? Um, that's generally how I go through interest in books. I'm gonna rip over in the middle and see if we can guess. Uncorrected proof. Oh, okay, this is Thomas King. I saw green grass running water. Uh, the back of the turtle. This is, I've read his nonfiction. I haven't read any fiction by him. I've read The Inconvenient Indian and I read um, something to do about storytelling. It was a, no, um, nope, okay, yeah. Um, so this is a definite stay. He's a uh, indigenous author that I know I enjoy. Well, I enjoy his nonfiction, so let's see if I enjoy his fiction. Who knows when I'll get around to it, but... Oh, okay, this is a short history of... <laughs> I can tell this from the name. A short history of tractors in Ukrainian? A short history of tractors in Ukrainian. And I'm Ukrainian, part. I'm I'm not going to get into my genetics, my my background but yeah i'm part ukrainian so that's really cool that's i think that's why i picked it up <laughs> um oh this is a little hardcover what's this one what is this one let's just rip oh okay a section here oh banana yoshimoto okay this one's lizard um it says a collection of short stories i believe yeah um by a japanese author that's cool. I'm really excited. This is like giving me like such drive. Oh, so here's the Elena Fonte, my brilliant friend. I've been wanting to read this, but again, I I didn't know where it was on my shelves because it was wrapped. Um, I have I have the sequels unwrapped. That's where I learned my lesson. And it looks like we have a bunch of graphic novels. So, oh, Jughead. So I don't know why I wrap these, because it takes you like an hour at most to read these. Jughead. Um, I don't know how I feel about the new Archie comics. I'm still figuring that out. I grew up like with the with the uh, ones you just buy at the the checkout stand with like the papery pages, the newspaper type pages, if that makes sense. This one. Oh, Punisher. No, Preacher. Um, yeah, Garth Ennis is one of my favorite authors, comic book authors. So there we go. I've been wanting to read more graphic novels, and I have a whole bunch on my uh, tablet, but oh, this is a Flash. Oh, we've got like different versions of Flash. Which Flash? It's this. Oh, Mark Ward. Um, so it's just a collection of the different stories by him uh, writing for Flash. Cool. My bag is getting full. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going. More graphic novels. 
this one? Oh, Sabrina. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. I haven't watched the new series. I don't know if I'm interested in it. It seems a little too scary. Um, but I grew up with, like, the Michelle Joan Hart. Is that her name? Um, and, like, reading her in the Archie comics, of course. I don't know if this is a graphic novel. Nope, this isn't a graphic novel. Okay, this is a series of short stories. But I think they're all science fiction based. Sorry, I should take us to your chief and other stories by Drew Hayden Taylor, and he is a First Nations author, an Indigenous author, Canadian. Well, Indigenous. They're not Canadian if they're Indigenous, but they're. I'm not gonna get. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. But yeah. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Hardcover. What's this one? Can you tell? Oh, The Devourers. Okay. By Indra Das. I think this is, um, I just love that cover. I think I'm just going to keep this book solely for the cover. I'm not even going to talk about what I think it's about. This cover is beautiful. Okay. We have a lot to get through. <laughs> and I'm already at 20 minutes just doing two. I'm so excited. I just, ooh, that seems familiar. Oh, this is, this is going to be a... What's his name? I can't remember the name. Charles Bukowski. Ah, I couldn't remember that name. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, oh, this is poetry. Okay. I can't remember if it was one of his novels or poetry. This is The Rimming House Mad Girls. Mad... Mad... Sure. That's how we're pronouncing it. I couldn't prepare for this video. Everything's just a complete surprise to me, as much as it is to you. Okay. Oh, it's double wrapped. Okay. I'm trying to... It's orange. Oh, see? Civil Disobedience in Walden by Henry David Thoreau. This is a classic I haven't read. Um, I've heard some things about Walden and how it's not exactly as true as you think it would be, but I'm really interested in reading the Civil Disobedience part. Um, I was really interested in Civil Disobedience in high school. Here's a little bit about me that you may not know. This is a little hardcover. Sorry, I'm gonna wreck my nails. Oh, I am. Oh well, I don't really care about them anyways. <laughs> um, oh, Ooh, what's that? Can you guess what that would be? Ooh, okay. It looks like a little not as we know it. We stared as the creature's eyes cracked open. I think this is a middle grade. I'm gonna keep that for sure. Okay, I'm gonna try and be a little more careful here because my nails are like I'm not they're not polished like the they're just getting wrecked oh see I was so excited when I bought this book and then I never read it animals by Don LePan I think this is about like um yeah animals um have become extinct um and it's now like what are humans gonna eat now I don't know let's read the book and find out oh there is your books up there okay let's just Sorry. Michelle Faber. There's another Michelle Faber here. And, oh, look, it's gold sprayed edges. That's cool. Um, the Book of Strange New Things. Can't remember what it's about, really, but um, I know I've heard really good things about it. So, we're gonna get that one. We're gonna keep that one out. Um, this one's already opened. Paul Harding. Oh, this is called Pinkers, I believe? Yes. Oh, it doesn't tell you what it's about. I hate it when books do that. Like, it's just blurbs on the back. Oh, no, never mind. An old man lies dying as time collapses into memory. He travels deep into the past where he's reunited with his father and relives the wonder and pain of his impoverished New England youth. I'm gonna put that in the maybe pile. I remember the title. Um, mostly because Pinkers from real time. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't know if I'm still interested in reading it. <clears throat> oh, Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol. I've been, I have this on ebook too that I've been meaning to read. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> someone used the gum wrapper. That's cool. That's a bookmark. They only got to page 52. Um, yeah, that's another Russian. Great. Let's see what else we have here. Ooh, it's a nice, like, orangey yellow. Don't, doesn't strike any familiarity in me yet. Malcolm by James Purdy, a comic novel. 
Um, again, I don't have no idea. So I'm going to put this in the maybe pile to take more look at later. If, if I tell you a book's going in the maybe pile and you like it, um, let me know. Maybe I'll keep it. Try and convince me. This is a heavy book. And it is. Oh, it's another Reader's Digest. Um, I had a Moby Dick one up here. And this one is Ben Hur. Um, I like these editions. Um, oh, this one doesn't have the thingy, but they have illustrations throughout. Like, look, little all the all the pages have little illustrations. That's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna have to pause here because I have to get more more bags um, and put the books on the shelves. So I'll be back and we'll move over to these shelves. Uh, so I'll be back. I will but in a another video because if I had included the whole shelf unwrapping this would be like a four hour long video. Um, so yeah, I will see you in another video. Thank you for watching.